No pressure here for our next guest, Kelly Gardner, right? Up. Just relax. It's no okay. No pressure. Right now. It's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Playing Marilyn Monroe in the Lifetime miniseries, The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, it shows her rise in Hollywood, also explores all the demons. Tell me this. Do they always... Do they have auditions for television? Marilyn. You hear that? Concentrate. No, you're talking about me. There's no one out there. You don't want to hear that? No, there's nothing. Oh, I can't do this while they're out there. Turn on the lights. Turn them out! <sighs> Darling girl, why are you so tormented? <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. I love that you told us that you really didn't know much about her. You know, no. you just knew that she was most famous, and that was about it, right? I knew she was epically beautiful, funny, talented. I'd seen some films, mm -hmm. but not all of them. So it was really, it was really. All right, so Kelly yeah. Garner, they come to you and they say, "All right, why don't you play Marilyn Monroe?" <laughs> Everybody has a take on Marilyn Monroe, right? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Everybody owns their own version of Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. Was that very intimidating for you? It was extremely intimidating. I laughed at first. I was like, oh, are you kidding? I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. The um, side by side. The side by side. Um, I laughed at first, you know, but uh, when this explores kind of m her mental health and her, her relationship she had with her mother, who was a schizophrenic, and I found that a really interesting part of her life that I didn't know anything about, and I'm a you know big proponent of mental health. And I didn't know that either, and the mom, played by Susan Sarandon, also Susan's real-life daughter as the younger version. Yeah. And that schizophrenia and, and what she did to you, or to the yeah. Maryland. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, just, just not being there, you know, not, not having a consistent, healthy mother figure can be extremely and damaging. And not even in terms of touch and affection and all of that. Right. That didn't exist. So it's very simple to say that's why Marilyn needed the love and affection of the entire world. Exactly. But, yes. Yeah. Right, now you have been in therapy, right? I have, yeah. So therefore, and this is based a lot on the therapy the process. We use the vice of Marilyn with a fictional therapist to mm -hmm. kind of tell her story. And for you, uh, was that a way to get to the truth maybe even better than in acting out the rest of her life? I think so. Yeah, I think it, I think it, it was a it was a good opportunity for me to combine a lot of her story with a lot of my own truth and some kind of parallels or just different circumstances, but same understandings of some elements of what it is like to look look for love or, or to be a young actress and to have these big dreams and to, to feel fulfilled or to fill the void. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was nice to get to play that. You Look know? At I like your Moore. intensity here when yeah. you talk about that. Ah. Now, now you're looking here, there's there's your mom, right? Ah, Susan. Academy Award winner. Just Academy Award, oh, yeah. Just some Susan Sarandon, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Emily that's Watson. That's Joe DiMaggio, right? That's Joe DiMaggio. Yeah. Now, do, are you aware of that he was perhaps a bigger star than she was when they got married? Joe DiMaggio? <laughs> I don't know, we can argue this. But you, there was a famous line, I don't know if it's in, in the In different ways, yeah. Where she said to him, Joe, I was in Korea, you don't know what it's like. There were 50,000 people cheering. And he said, I very well know what that's like. <laughs> that's every day at work for me. That's right. good. That's yeah. probably how they bonded. You yes. had to really step into this role. Um, once you saw yourself done up with the hair and the makeup, did that make it become more real for you? I mean, the, creating the whole image? Well, yeah, it definitely made it become real. I was like, oh, I'm doing this. Wow, this is really happening. But it was one of those things where it was such a beautiful hair make, such a talented hair and makeup costume team. Um, and Marilyn herself was such a construct from Norma Jane to this iconic image of her. So I think for me, I was just happy that I didn't feel completely silly, oh, sure. mm -hmm. so that then I could actually just mm -hmm. do my job, which was try and tell the best. And even Norma Jean, if I recall correctly, lived in Van Nuys, I think. Uh, yeah, she's like a, she's yeah. an L.A. girl. And, and when you looked at pictures of her before she had things oh. done to her face, she looked like the all-American girl, as Tell opposed to the yeah. sex goddess. I think my favorite stuff is the first two hours where, you, where she's Norma Jean, and then you see Norma Jean starting to grow up and starting to... Uh, step outside her or that little duckling, mm -hmm. awkward duckling phase, and, and understand her her beauty and use the it. The voice. The voice. How far did you go ah, with the voice? The voice. Uh, <laughs> what a point of contention! I remember when I was like first going going up for it. There was the director was just please just don't do a voice, just don't. And I was like, no, you got to let me try it. Yeah. And I tried it, and it wasn't there yet. She's like, just use 
your voice. But by the time we got there, I'd done some work and we played around. We would do some takes where the voice was there and then some where it wasn't. And so God bless the editors. Can you do it for us now? Can you do any of the little, because you have to really embody. Oh, yeah, I mean, she's, oh, she's still a higher, you know? And she's, I think she's such a, I think she's such a non-verbal communicator, you know, I don't think it's even as much of her voice or what she's saying, but her body language. So if I did more like this to Steve? Yeah, that just lean in a little bit. Does that make you uncomfortable? Or? I feel more like Arthur Miller than Joe <laughs> Oh, yeah, we could here. just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are very, we were saying this before the interview started, there are very few people who 53 years after their demise, two and a half generations, are as well known and as big stars as they were then, perhaps even bigger. Sure. What is the quality? What is it? Uh, I think uh, dying so young and so famous. Oh, I mean, there's a handful of them, right? That still are just kind like of James, these indelible James Dean, that kind of, yes. stars. Yeah. Who's the but brave side? I think, yeah. uh, I think Marilyn, um, I think there was a vulnerability and a realness. Like there was something very piercing about her. You could see her soul mm -hmm. a lot. That I think that's just kind of why she's everlasting. And it's such a such a Hollywood tale, you know, especially oh, in, yeah. in towns like this. It's just, it's like the... No, 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 not in towns like this. This is the only one. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like big, like hubs of artists Got it. making Got it. movies. Hey, it's great to meet you. It's today. so nice to Thank meet you, you, too. Thank you for having uh, me. The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe premieres Saturday night at 8 o'clock on Lifetime. It's a two-parter, right? Two-parter. Two I've seen the first okay. part. I really enjoyed Four it. Four hours. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah.